So we've all seen reports that with rising global temperatures, we're likely to see melting of the, uh, the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets in the future. So how do ice sheets melt? And it's not an insignificant question. Yes, they turn to water, but that is the key concern. Climate scientists predict that, with, um, that the addition of cold, fresh water to the ocean may disrupt the patterns of ocean circulation, such as the Gulf Stream that keeps Northwest Europe relatively warm and means those Brits are totally <coughs> not a couple of inches of snow. <laughs> so how did ice sheets generate water? How much is stored? And is this released as a trickle or is it released as a flood? To answer these questions, we can't fast forward, so we have to rewind. We have to look at how past ice sheets responded to climate change and see how, what processes operated then and what might have operated in the future. The Cordilleran ice sheet was our ice sheet that sat up in BC around 12,000 years ago. And it's received very little study compared to other ice sheets of the same period. And as such, the ideas about how it melted are relatively basic compared to those other ice sheets. For instance, we currently think that it basically shrank down in place from the top down. Whereas other ice sheets of the same period pulled back steadily from their edges. This is quite crucial in terms of how it was interacting with the climate. Also, we know that there were large lakes, similar to these ones in Iceland, that were down at the margin of the ice sheet. But did these, did these lakes drain as catastrophic floods, or did they trickle away? My research is a reinvestigation of these glacial lakes, trying to infer what processes operated. So we've been looking at the, the lakes that were down around Meriton Campus in the southern tier of British Columbia, and we found some very interesting things. Firstly, we've been able to quantify how much water was actually being stored in these lakes, and it's actually quite a lot around 260 cubic kilometers in one instance, which is about the size of Lake Winnipeg today. We also see that these did indeed flood. When the ice pulled back, as you can see, it opens progressively lower outlets, which allows these floods, which allows these lakes to drain catastrophically. And in those outflows, we see the characteristic sediments and landforms that we attribute to floods. And yes, I did say that the ice pulled back, which suggests which we see in the lakes expanding to the northwest, which shows the ice front retreating in that direction, which suggests that the Cordillera wasn't so different from the other ice sheets after all. This improves the Cordillera in terms of our ability to predict how future ice sheets might decay, and also brings it in line with those other ice sheets of the past. Hopefully this will inform how those future ice sheets will indeed melt. <laughs>